so thank you very much for coming here. Thanks so for having us to be able to talk to you. And if you could um, first maybe introduce yourself and your organization, as possible. My name is Amman de Canyon. I am the leader of the indigenous people of the Afro. It is not an organization per se, it is a movement of a nation to try to exercise their God-given right to self-determination. As recognized by every civilized institution around the world, including the UN and the African Charter, even the Constitution of Nigeria itself as well, um, acknowledges that people do have a right to seek self-determination, and that's exactly what we're seeking to take from advantage of. Right. Very peaceful movement. Um, it is a non-violent movement. We don't believe in violence. It is entirely peaceful. We agitate. We protest. We organize rallies, and um, we talk to people. That's all that we do. Mm -hmm. uh, we've endured quite a lot from the Nigerian government. We are still enduring those um, forms of brutality against our people up until this very morning. They are still killing. They are still pillaging. They are still raping our women. But we have remained on the side of nonviolence uh, because we feel that that is the best way to go. I imagine that it's a difficult decision to take because in the long run it's, it's, it helps you to achieve your goal. But I could understand that if some people say, no, we have to stop so much. We have a right to fight them. It's very, very frustrating. We are inspired by the struggles and the successes of the likes of Martin Luther King and um, Gandhi in India, and we we'll believe that although the temptation to fight force with force, to fight evil with evil, um, coming from a very civilized people, um, as we have observed, we would not mean ourselves by um, to be to the level of the aggressor. So we intend to continue to speak to organizations around the world like themselves, to begin to make and consistently make the case for the effort. We are not against anybody. We are not allowed to emasculate any public interest. We are not there to try and do something that hasn't been done before. All we are trying to say is that the way that Nigeria, as a microcosm of what Africa has to represent, is structured, there is no way you can possibly extract any meaningful human existence from the present arrangement we have in Nigeria and by implication across Africa as a whole. So the best way for us to go is to try to return to how we were before the colonial, artificial colonial bodies were thrown up. Exactly what Germany fought here in, um, in late 80s to early 90s. As I quite, um, as I've argued on a few occasions, the um, coming down of the Berlin Wall, the own version of self-determination, the clash of ideologies between between socialism and, and capitalism made it impossible for the great German people to be together as a nation. I want Germans to also understand that that is exactly what is happening to us in Africa today, and especially in Nigeria. What we are having is our own version of the Berlin Wall, and the best way to get trying to get rid of that is by allowing reason, logic, and common sense to prevail, and not by going to war. And we don't intend to go to war. What are the means that the Nigerian government, governments, successive governments, have used in order to suppress human rights for Biafrans, self determination for Biafrans? A comprehensive and hotel economic, social, and political emasculation of our people. It may surprise you to know that Biafra is in the main a coastal region, a coastal nation. Prior to the war, we had about three functioning viable seaports. I just want to this our suffering down so that Americans can understand it. We are not agitating for Biafra for the sake of it. We are doing it because the political, economic, and social arrangement we unfortunately found ourselves in within Nigeria is workable for us. But Hakot Seaport is not working. Calabar Seaport is not working. Worry seaport is not working. Now there is huge congestion at the proper work in Lagos. Instead of the Nigerian government to open Worry Seaport, Wakot Seaport, and Calabar Seaport, 
They have now decided to build two brand new national seaports in Lagos, rather than open the ones in Africa. You may also be aware of the fact that in the recent country elections, that the Afrans were prevented from voting in Lagos, in Abuja, and in Kano. These are well documented by the observers that were sent by the European Union. There has been no notice of admonition. Nigerian governments have not been called or held to account as to why citizens of a particular country supposedly were not allowed to vote. I'll give you a simple example, again in Germany. You have a lot of people who are German citizens that by that have Turkish um, um, either parents or grandparents that descended from the from, from the Turkish migrants into Germany after the Second World War. It is tantamount to saying to them that you will not vote in Bavaria, you will not vote in say in Hamburg, you will not vote in Cologne because you are Turkish. Do you see such a thing happening in Germany? Mm -hmm. But that is what is happening in Nigeria. And nobody is talking about it. When it comes to police brutality, military occupation, extortion, rape, pill, kidnapping, all forms of what I call official bandits by the security arms and Nigerian government, all things we encounter and witness on a daily basis. All we do is we catalog them, we forward them to the likes of the organization, to the UN, to the EU, and so the status quo that you have here are those supporting the status quo in Nigeria, which is the presence of, of the present political structure in Nigeria, will lead to the extinction of my people. Who benefits from structure? I think the colonial members benefit from it. Mm -hmm. And also those whose interest is to ensure that Africans perpetually poor and subservient to powers that be around the world. You may also know that there is a great race in Africa right now, a new form brand of colonialism, with the Chinese coming in and perhaps the Americans trying to stop them by engaging a few governments in Africa. I am not against economic investment in Africa. I'm not against the economic participation of powerful nations in Africa. In fact, I, I am a capitalist. I believe in laissez-faire economics. I want people to come to Africa to invest great jobs and opportunities for everyone. But there has to be a recognition that the arrangement that we, or as far as inherited after colonialism, is unworkable, has never worked, and will never ever work. That is why no single black and country is proud of its record. No single black and country is developing in the rest of the world developing. All of them are then on handouts from Europe, from America, from Paris. And there is a reason for that. The reason for that is that the matter of divergent value systems is the key problem that we have. Allow me to once again reference Germany. There is um, a debate within the EU to allow Turkey to become a part of the EU. They've been applying for years and lobbying to become part of the EU. Although they are part of the UEFA, you have the Latasara, you have um, all the great football clubs from Turkey playing in the UN, mm. uh, or UEFA uh, um, Champions League. But yet, Turkey is a part of the EU, and there's a reason for that, a very valuable one. The reason being that which is the way you understand as a group of people, the way you, you distill issues, the way you solve them, the way you resolve them, is who you are as a people. We all know it's called value system. The value system of an Islamic Turkish state cannot sync with what you have in Western Europe as encapsulated in the EU. Mm -hmm. In other words, to fit Turkey within the EU, we lead to a lot of cultural clash and upheaval. So the next thing to do is to allow Turkey to stay where it is that it prevent friends with Europe. But if you are seeking similar union with, say, Canada or the USA, it will be far more easier to achieve because they are all Judeo-Christians, they have democratic values, they believe in human rights, 
They believe in having an open society. They believe in the rule of law. This is what binds Europe together as presently constituted. Now, if you come to Nigeria, for instance, the northern part of Nigeria, the mostly feudal Islamic Emirates. In the west, the Yorubas, educated, sophisticated and obeying, they're more monarchical in their outlook. We Easterners, we Biafrans, are Republicans. So having a state or a nation like Nigeria is like um, lumping United States of America, Iran, and Afghanistan into one country. And everybody knows it can never ever work. Mm -hmm. So that is the difficulty that most academics and scholars have failed to grapple with that the present state structure in Africa is an impediment, a natural impediment to development, to growth, to the view of civilized society in Africa. And no part of black Africa will be civilized until these core issues are addressed. What do you say to those people who say that new countries mean new conflicts? You more for a certain nation, yes. for independence, yes. lead to more brutal clashes between different ethnic and religious groups. The same argument was made before the collapse of the Soviet Union. The same was also made before Yugoslavia was dissolved and to a lesser extent Serbia as well. You will recall and agree with me that Soviet was a nuclear power, isn't it? Was there a nuclear union broker? Yugoslavia to an extent the same. There was the, the fear or paranoia about the Balkans. You know, the, the ripple effect it will have on the broader of Yugoslavia be allowed to break up. Yugoslavia broke up. New emerging democracies came out as a result of it. Is there any war in Yugoslavia today? Not today, no. Exactly. There are legacies of the wars in the 90s, but absolutely. It did subside after a while. Mm -hmm. Exactly the same thing in Africa. It can be done in Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's inverted racialism, that's where I call it. It's racism by another means. To think that Europe can handle disintegration of the mighty empire like the Soviet Union, they don't expect Africans to manage their own disintegration. I don't think that is correct at all. You will also agree with me that Ethiopia, a from Ethiopia, and very recently, um, almost the, the history of the encouraging southern Sudan came out of Sudan. Um, is a case how that we are managed more than else. If there is a recognition that the primacy of the will of the people at all times will be allowed to prevail, then there won't be any issues at all. Mm -hmm. And let's assume that uh, the Biafrans will become an independent state, will get their freedom after all. And how do you envision the relation between born Biafra and Nigeria, the reason for that. I think that would be the same relationship that you and have in England. After all, the United States of America fought for independent conflict, for that matter, and broke away from the British Empire. And today, they call themselves cousins, that is, across the pond. Will happen with us before the British came to colonize us. And we will not be at war when the price is separate. There seems to be this fear that the reason why we see Africa is because of the, the huge oil and gas deposits we have in Biafra. That's not the case. We just want to live like any other civilized, normal country around the world. We come to jump to seek asylum. We don't want to drown in the Mediterranean. We expect thousands of kilometers uh, across the territory to die of dehydration. We don't want to be left as victims. We just want to live an ordinary, dignified life. You want to be the masters of your faith? Absolutely. Which any normal human being will aspire to have. Mm -hmm. Yes. Could you tell us something about your own personal history? You were born in 1967. Yes, the Biafran War had already begun. Yes. Um, do you remember anything with your first years on Earth? Mm -hmm. Not actually, no. I the, I don't know how it happened, because all I can recall was the, for those first three years, no, I can't recall anything at all. I know I 
that building and loving text mm. that's a lesson we've got from Italy. But it's got a mean when the Nigerian soldiers ransacked my village and uh, destroyed the province and took most of the men away because a young Fulani soldier molested one of our sisters and she retaliated. She spurned his advances and shot him away basically and I was in my village was up and um, that, that was my first experience of what it means to be in Nigeria. The raiding of my village and the arrest and detention of our fathers and, and our uncles and our brothers. They, uh, somebody wanted to raise my sister and she said, my aunt actually, and she said no. So you can, and we had to live with that, with that occupation for a very long time. Uh, but it seems to me that the moment it went on, the world like Biafra was one of those um, traumas that the world wanted to bring about. And that was, that's what we get today. And until today there has not been any national reckoning, not any any reckoning, kind of reckoning, any reckoning with regards to the Biafra war, the crimes that were committed, it's not being talked about in Nigeria. No. Because I believe that the powers that be around the world doesn't want to talk about it, for reasons best known to them. Um, people died. 3.5 million people, apart from the Jews of Europe, of the second large genocide in modern history. There was conscious efforts to sweep the whole thing under the carpet, like it never happened. But for some reason, we may also ourselves be guilty of that because we did not do what we are now doing. Um, we have highlighted the point. So, we are In subsequent years, that very that I heard as a child stuck with me. And as time went on, we realized that Nigeria didn't want us to be there with them because they are slaves, perhaps. So now. <coughs> people they can exploit, people who are who will be made to subservient to the powers that be. But as time went on, became a we paid school fees to go to school. Others don't pay school fees. Others did not pay school fees. There's something called, there's a policy called the Education Advantage States in Nigeria. Which means that if I score 200 out of a 400 to go to a school, I will not gain admission or entry to that very school. If somebody else from somewhere in our house, only a three. Out of 400, <laughs> they'll get a prize mm -hmm. in a boarding school, in a school, they're called it. Our parents had to start from scratch at the war. Um, we were only given 20 pounds funding per male, adult, child. Regardless of how much you had in the bank before the war, immediately after the war, that money was discarded by the Nigerian state and only 20 pounds given to you to start life with mm. That is why today you have us in, in the business of buying and selling rather than manufacturing and, and, and goods and, of, of goods and services. The <coughs> discrimination is not subtle anymore, very and sustained, culminating only recently in the Nigerian government, or those that are in charge of Nigeria telling us that we can't vote in certain states, that an evil man in Biafra can no longer be the president of Nigeria, this is of the Nigerian state. It is not something that happened at a particular time. It is as an accumulation of a series of um, very distressing and disturbing developments within Nigeria that led some of us to say that enough is enough. And we're not going to stop mm. until the, the rest are short. Mm. Um, you told us all that you agree. Yeah. Yes. It was 29 years ago when you went to London? Or no, it was even before? 
No, I'm trying to go see. Could you tell us about the circumstances of you and the country? I fled Nigeria when I was released from prison and they came to my house to kill me. Mm -hmm. The Nigerian state was killed on the 14th of September 2017. When I was due in court the next month, October the 13th, they came to kill me on the 14th and they ended up killing me to leave me in prison. Mm -hmm. But first, in any other world, there will be some kind of, but some kind of um, judicial review as to why somebody who was granted by the court should be at with the sole intention of killing them. Mm -hmm. None of that happened in my case. What they wanted to do was to kill me because they know the world has to do with Biafra, nobody gives a toss. You can walk into Biara today and kill a million people. I can assure you, nothing will happen to you. So they came to my house. They became emboldened because they killed Biafra so many times that questions were not being asked. So they just thought, you know, you are killing <clears throat> And that nobody will ask questions. That's what happened. Mm -hmm. so I was basically bundled out of my house by my security men. But unfortunately, 28 of them fell in the process. And I made my way to Israel. Israel, I, I Israel. They came to kill me. I didn't live in war against the state. Absolutely not. Because the full and ruling class in Nigeria, because they know that they have the backing of the Islamic world, and by extension, Britain, they can do whatever they can like to anybody. Nothing will come of it. That's the type of life we are being able to deal in Nigeria. Can you tell us something about your relationship with the state of Israel? I am a Jew, not just myself, but you know, my people. We are uh, most of the Jewish traditions we practice. We all into it, basically. And um, so it's a question of um, I think is. Um, the journey of um, discovery. You, know, you discover yourself and know where you come from, and um, we can do what we can to be very proud of that, of that very heritage. And I did. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. So we've been this way for centuries. This is how we were born. So. And we make no apologies about that. Mm -hmm. I understand that. And today, how does the Nigerian government portray this towards the people of the outside? The world, I think, is a conspiracy to perhaps kill every Biafran on the face of the earth, erase Biafran people. Because Nigeria has a lot of money, they get a lot of food, oil, and gas from my people. <clears throat> and they have well defined lobbies around, including here in Germany. So when you face of Biafra, the foreign ministry, they tell you is that, oh, we are doing the best we can to make sure that Nigeria lives up to its obligations to respect human rights and to have value for the life of its citizens. That's all. We support the territory of Nigeria, and for that very reason, all we can do is advise my government. And the impunity continues. The policy of the deal of Great countries like Germany and Britain is to encourage in Africa. And they close with Germany that we don't want to destabilize West Africa of region. Nigeria is the only power that is um, as a best population. We don't want to disrupt or you know the outcast. That's what they're saying. We just need that. to hold Nigerian government to account just by um, complex taking or diplomatic. Maneuvering. All it does is very simple. You either do this or here are the consequences of your actions. But they have failed to do that time and time again. That's why people are dying on a daily basis. That is why the killings are continuing now. And it's going to grow from the Biafran territories to the Middle Belt and to the North. 
when they kill and nobody does anything about it. It emboldens them and they kill even more. And the, as I'm speaking to you right now, if you go online and type in killings in Nigeria, you will see the one that happened this very afternoon. All the world does is turn the blind eye. And if that can be turned because we don't want to upset the world. I want to actually know what they are defending. Because an independent Biafra will do business with every right thinking, similar to every Arab world. If the idea is for the European world to say, we want Paris, we want clothes to be achieved, drinking water in the education of the rest of it, the best way to achieve the other Southeast Asia is developing today because of Japan. Europe is raised today because of the healthy competition between the likes of Germany and France, the UK, and all the rest of it. Why wouldn't they allow the Africa to have There is this concept, perhaps from the other. You And you know that Biafra can solve that very problem. But the key is to get into that. Because those in the middle of the valley in Africa want to maintain it. This is the majority. They, they are playing God. You know, we are going to Africa. We created Nigeria. We created the Cameroons, Ghana. Is but why the Soviet Union came in Germany and decided Germany into two? By the war. Why was it? That NATO, Western Europe, and North America said no. Or at least fought until the virus came down. Maybe because of you have in Europe and love people. In Africa, you have heads of states who are more interested in trying to elevate some of the people. So, in that regard, I'm not blaming, uh, uh, the blame is not entirely on Europe and America. I think we also have to as all. We don't behave like humans should. Most Americans, I'm sorry to say, there's not much to between us and the wild beasts in the forest. I'm very, very popular on this. Then, then I can be laid on the doorstep of you, America. We're also responsible. We have failed to listen properly like humans. That is why. Ask him how come you did elections? All the bloodshed. People were killed, mowed down in polling locations. You saw them burn polling, polling booths down, including the ballot papers. Have you heard of any national party? Any condemnation? Mm -hmm. Because these boys, they have oil and gas interests. Come to destroy us. These monkeys can die all the life. We don't need that oil and gas. And that's exactly what dictates their reasoning. So your point would also be that societies in Western countries need to wake up and put more pressure on this to change their tech towards Nigeria. Yes, in the idea of the But within a wider context, nothing is happening in Africa. CNN cover it, that just cover it, Sky News won't cover it. Can watch Sky News from year to year, 
There will be no mention of anything in terms of human rights abuses happening in Africa on the platform. The same. Something similar could also happen in Nigeria. It might give any power or help to the Biafran movement. Yes, the people within the meaning, the true understanding of what a nation should be. Is it very ironic that when Southern Sudan was part of Sudan, this uprising never happened? It's only happening now because now you have more more homogeneous Islamic almost um, Arabic in coloration population they now have the right to decide who governs them in Nigeria if Nigeria were to divide into three quarters we can now hold accountable mm -hmm. but having this amorphous um, 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 the congregation of diverse nationalities. All you need to do is to play on the ethnic card in terms of listening. So you can be the world dictator in the world and nobody will move you. Because you will say you're not going to That's what happens in Africa. That's what happens in Africa. Most political scientists don't even know. But in terms, look at the on all the things happened in Africa. Where there were predominantly one thing or other, be it religious, be it political, be it social, they had one thing in common. They had pockets of um, other faith regimes and people, and in the main, the overall religion was Islam. So their value system was Islamic. You can rise up against the ruler of the state and people understand you. If I rise up now in Nigeria to fight against that thing that have there as the president, that so they will say because they're practicing Jew. He doesn't like us. We are Muslims. Do you understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. But if they have Muslims, governing Muslims, they against your leader and nobody will complain. Mm -hmm. That is one of the lasting damages that the arbitrary creation of nation states in Africa is happening. You can never have a revolution. A popular uprising in black Africa never, ever, ever, with the current and existing boundary structure you have in Africa, is possible. Forget it. And without popular uprising and change anything mm -hmm. in society. So many people would say that uh, the existing boards are a bit difficult to say the least to see, but they some kind of stability. You would say that as long as they, there won't be any stability. Anymore. Was there was this overall concern for stability so prominent when communism was collapsing across Eastern Europe? Why didn't the powers that be say, no, if we collapse communism, there are no more stability with some nuclear warheads in Kazakhstan, some in Georgia, some in Azerbaijan? There will be difficulties across the world, or there will be this nuclear um, apocalypse. Countries that had nuclear weapons broke into pieces. There was no nuclear war. Anybody else or using an excuse to maintain these evil regimes in Africa, that person is worse than a table. It's evil. It's a lie. Mm -hmm. An ally, a region from Ethiopia, has the war ended? Southern Sudan, Sudan itself, has the world come to an end. Why is it that when it comes to Africa, the rules always change? Why is that? That is my main concern. Allow us to grow organically the same way that states have formed in Europe. How can I come from Biafra and I come to Germany, I caught you into seven places and say, you, 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 from today your name is Westphalia, 
you're Bavarian, you're no longer German. Does that make any sense to anybody? Mm -hmm. Why must we be allowed to endure? Maybe because we are Africans, we don't ask questions, and we are perhaps very stupid, I don't know. So, assume, let's be optimistic, assume that one day you will be able to return to Africa yes. after a long time. After. Now, now when? Yes. What's the first thing that you do? First thing that I would do is to go and pray at the temple where our forefathers used to pray, pray in the place called Arochukum. The very oldest temple described by the British in 1904. I'll go back and pray. I think that's the first thing that I will do. And um, I will watch a crop of new leaders emerge to take Biafra to its rightful position in Africa. I won't say the world. If I say the world, they will say black people from Africa feeling very well, going to school, no farming. No difficulties. I don't think that some person can live with that. Uh, uh, there is a part, I believe, in an average European that actually embodies the suffering and misery in Africa. I'm being honest with you. Mm. There could be a, uh, an insignificant minority uh, that have the, 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 the sense of faith within them that would like to see Africa emerge from the myth that is in it. But I can tell you categorically that uh, I believe. Some of them that donate money to charity may be so out of some kind of pity that these creatures can't handle the care of themselves. I want to be alive to watch Biara emerge from that stereotype, become something that today. And the world has nothing to do with it. The more I feel we have to Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. For having me. Talking to us and letting us.